property management accounting is not your typical business accounting. There have to be accounts for both properties and tenants, and don't forget about keeping your administrative tasks like payroll and utilities separate from your property management dealings. I know it all sounds complicated, but what I'm gonna do is break down property management accounting in a way that's both easy to understand and simple to implement. And I'm gonna break it down into sections across two videos for you, and they'll all be marked down below so you can easily navigate to wherever you need to be in the video. Part one, we're gonna be going over accounting terms. Part two, we're gonna be going over how to set up your property management accounting. Part three, we're gonna cover property management accounting best practices. Part four, 1031 exchanges. And part five, choosing the best property management accounting software. In this video, I'm gonna be covering parts one and two, so accounting terms and how to set up your property management accounting. Look, if you feel overwhelmed by all of these new phrases and terms, believe me, it's okay. You see, unless you have a background in accounting, most of this will probably be pretty foreign to you, and that can make learning even the most basic business accounting tasks just difficult and time consuming. That's where the first part of this guide comes in. I'm gonna go over some critical accounting terms that you should know, but only terms that are relevant to accounting and property management. So here are the top 20 most crucial property management accounting principles and terms to know. An accounting period is a period of time within a financial statement. Typically, this is either one or several days, months, or years. If you've ever run a report in QuickBooks or similar accounting software to see things like your revenue and expenses, you'll recognize that every report uses an accounting period. Accounts payable refers to what your business currently owes from its vendors. This is either a product or a service that you use to run your business in some form, such as the bill for a contractor to fix a property. The flip side of your accounts payable. This is what you're currently owed for your services. Any open invoices or unpaid fees or rent balances will all go here. The cash accounting method records transactions when they're either paid or payment is received, depending on whether you're paying a bill or receiving a payment from a tenant. Sole proprietors often use this method as it's an easy way to manage your accounting in the early stages. However, all businesses with employees are required to use the accrual accounting method. Whoa, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up. Okay, so look, here's the thing. I realized while I was editing this video that I may or may not have missed a part of the script. But that's not important. What is important is the accrual accounting method. So if we could just bring it on down. Take your time. No, it's fine. I'll wait. Oh. Anyway. So what's important about the accrual accounting method is to remember that this method of accounting records transactions based on the transaction date, as opposed to recording the transactions when you send or receive the payment. Keep in mind that any business with employees is required to use this accounting method. And while I have you here, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much and back to the video. Your general ledger, or GL for short, is a complete record of all your business transactions. Chances are if you use an accounting software already, this is generated automatically for you as you input transactions. You see, you need to regularly, often monthly, make sure that your general ledger and the actual statement balance across your business bank accounts match up. This is the process of bank reconciliation. Suppose your bank account is lower than your general ledger. Well, in that case, you need to identify what transactions weren't recorded in your general ledger and add them in to ensure that you're keeping accurate records. An asset is anything that the business owns which has value. The most obvious example of this is the properties themselves, but it can also include any cash deposits, land, and your accounts receivable. Revenue refers to the income generated by your business for a certain period. When you receive a payment from a tenant if you're a landlord, or from a landlord if you're a property management company, that's revenue. An expense is a cost you pay to do business. Your costs will include payroll, rent, vendor and contractor payments, marketing, and anything else that you pay for. Overhead includes all the costs to run your business outside of the actual service you provide. For example, payroll, rent for your office, utilities, and insurance. Credit can branch into the heavy accounting jargon, but the vital thing to understand is that credit refers to any transaction which appears on the right side of an asset account. These types of transactions decrease that asset account. Now, debit refers to the opposite of credit, being any transaction that appears on the left side of an asset account. These transactions increase an asset account. Depreciation is used to gauge the value of an asset over time. For example, if you purchase construction equipment to build a property, the value of that equipment will depreciate annually based on different factors. Depreciation can often be written off on your annual taxes depending on the item, so the actual depreciation number of your assets is a number you're going to want to track. Equity is the value of or ownership interest in the business. If you own your own business, equity equals your assets minus your liabilities. 
Gross profit equals revenue minus the cost of goods sold, which simply refers to the cost of offering your services. Net profit is different from gross profit in that it doesn't just subtract the cost of your services, but all costs associated with running your business. This includes a term that we covered earlier, your overhead, so your operating expenses, utilities, rent, etc. A liability is something that a company owes. It counts payable, a mortgage, a payroll, or a loan. Bookkeeping is essentially just business accounting, the process of recording business transactions that'll give you your accounting data. A financial statement isn't any one thing, rather it refers to any report which gives information on the financial health of a business. So that could be your balance sheet, profit and loss, or an income statement. If a lender or auditor needs financial statements from you, they'll typically specify which kind of report they need. Now that you've learned the essential property accounting terms, it's time to put them into practice and get to work setting up your accounting. So the first step, and it might sound obvious to some, but believe me, it's a mistake many property owners make when they start, and that stems from a lack of understanding, but it's to set up a separate business account. A typical early accounting mistake is to do your property and other business transactions from a personal account. In the eyes of the IRS, this is a big no-no. However, that's not the only reason you wanna keep your personal and business accounts separate. Most importantly, it wreaks havoc on your accounting and makes it impossible to track your transactions accurately. To remedy this, just set up a separate account used strictly for business, ideally a business checking account which is designed for those business purposes. So when you do this, all property related income will flow into this account and all expenses will be paid from this account or multiple accounts in the case of more complex rental property accounting. Then you're gonna choose your accounting method. There are two types of accounting methods, accrual and cash. If you can't figure out which one to choose, well then you're in luck because this step is less about choosing an accounting method than it is understanding understanding the difference. With cash basis accounting, as soon as you receive or send money, whether for your services or for the sale of a property or payment to a contractor, you record the transaction. For example, if in September a tenant pays you $1,500 for rent that month, you or your accountant would then enter that amount as a rent payment in your accounting program right then and there. When a transaction happens, you record it. It couldn't be simpler. Because of this, it tends to be the accounting method that most sole proprietors choose to use. That changes, however, once you have employees on payroll. With the accrual accounting method, transactions are recorded when they occur. So what exactly does that mean? If a tenant pays for rent that month, you record that transaction in that month. However, if a tenant pays for several months up front, you'd still only enter this month's rent as a transaction, even if you have those funds in your bank account. Then the next month, you'd enter the next rent payment as it occurs in that month. If you have employees, you are required to use this accounting method. Hence, it's less about choosing which way and more about understanding each method, unless you're a sole proprietor, in which case you can choose. <sighs> okay, so that was a lot of information, but you made it, and look how much you've learned so far. Be sure to like, subscribe if you haven't already, and be sure to check out the second part of this video where I'll be covering property management best practices, 1031 exchanges, and choosing the best property management accounting software for your business.